Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and welcome to part two of the matching furniture series that I'm building for our guest bedroom. So a few videos ago, I showed you how I built our guest bed and then I took a couple weeks to do some different projects, but I'm back with part two to show you how I built the matching nightstands. So if you're ready to tackle part two, two, two. two. If you're ready to tackle part two, <laughs> let's go. As always, I've got the building plans for this nightstand linked in the video description, along with tons of other project details to walk you through the process. I use three quarter inch birch plywood for the majority of this project. The full materials list can be found in the plans. You can build one nightstand from half a sheet of three quarter inch ply, but since I was building two, I just went ahead and cut down the full sheet. I use my circular saw and Craig rip cut to rip one strip to trim down for the side panels and a wider strip to trim down for the top and bottom panels. The leftover piece will be used later for the drawers. Once I had my plywood broken down, I started building the side panels. The corners of the nightstands were two by twos, so I trimmed down eight of them, four for each nightstand to about 20 inches long, then trimmed four plywood side panels the same length. I usually find it easiest to sand pieces before assembling versus after. Then I drilled pocket holes to assemble these pieces together. So that the pocket holes don't show in the final project, I was careful to drill the top two pocket holes within seven and a half inches of the top edge and the bottom pocket hole within one and a half inches of the bottom edge. Then I assembled four identical side panels, two for each nightstand, using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws so that the panels were all flush across the inside. Once the side panels were together, I began building the main body of the piece. I pulled out the wider strip that I ripped from my plywood sheet earlier for the top and bottom panels and I trimmed down two pieces for the bottom. These pieces will actually be slightly narrower than the top, so after they were cut to length, I ran them through the table saw to the correct width. Of course, if you don't have a table saw, you can definitely use a circular saw for this instead. Now, here's where the plans differ from what I actually did here. Long story short, I wanted to quote unquote thicken up the front edge of the bottom shelf, so I glued a strip of plywood along the front edge. However, in order to install the threaded inserts in the bottom for the feet, this piece really needed to be wider than it is here. I also realized later that installing threaded inserts is a lot easier in solid wood versus in plywood. So that said, in the plans, I recommended using a one x three here to glue onto the bottom of these panels instead of this thin piece of plywood. Then to hide the seam, you can just apply one and a half inch thick iron on edge banding or add a one by two or lattice trim on the front. In my case, I used edge banding. And since the plans would call for you to buy a one x three for this anyway, you might as well save on scraps and use it other places as well. So in the plans, these top supports here are also one by threes, not plywood like I used here. As a side note, this is why I always build my projects first, then draw up the plans. I realize things as I'm building that may or may not work and I can change the plans accordingly. Anyway, once I had a bottom panel and three support strips cut, I drilled pocket holes into the ends and began installing these between the side panels. Notice that the bottom panel is flush at the front, but I made sure that the back side was three quarter inch up from the bottom. Then I installed two supports at the top, one at the front and one at the back, and finally added the third strip six inches down from the top front support. I just used a scrap block here to keep my spacing consistent. Also, make sure when assembling that you keep the side panels correctly oriented so that the top two pocket holes stay toward the top. Then I installed the drawer slides. I used 16 inch ball bearing door slides here and installed these in the top section so that they were about one and a quarter inch inset from the front edge. I've got a detailed guide on how I install door slides that I will link in the description below so you can check that out if you're interested. 
Now, before moving on to building the drawers, let's talk about the feet. This is the part of the build that I'm a little embarrassed of as things just didn't really work out like I had hoped. There were multiple things going on with this process that I wanna share with you, so hopefully you have an easier time with it than I did. The first issue, the piece at the bottom panel at the front needed to be wider, like I mentioned before. And since it wasn't, I ended up having to cut four scrap blocks to go at each corner to install the threaded inserts. In the plans, you should only need to add two at the back. Now, I learned the hard way that plywood isn't great for installing inserts. So I recommend using solid wood blocks like some scrap 1x3s and gluing at each corner. You can screw or nail these in place if you'd like. You'll notice that I didn't wait for the glue to dry, but I definitely recommend doing that. I marked two inches in from each edge at each corner and drilled a hole larger than the shank of the insert, but smaller than the threads, just like pre-drilling for a screw. Then I started screwing these in. Now my scrap blocks started rising up and I realized it was because my inserts were a little bit too long. Once they hit the plywood under the scrap block, they started pushing it up. So I recommend getting shorter inserts than I used here. The ones that I bought actually come in different lengths and I'll link the shorter ones in the description. Mine were much longer than they really needed to be anyway. All that said, I had to screw and clamp these blocks down while I installed them and it looks kind of like a hot mess. So thankfully this is on the bottom side and I'm making these for me so I don't personally really care. But using solid wood, waiting for the glue to dry, and using shorter inserts should help you avoid these issues. Once the inserts were installed, I could simply screw these feet in. Now, if they don't seem to bite into the threads, take some pliers and back out the threaded rod in the foot so that it sticks out a little longer. Some of mine were actually pretty short. Anyway, once that chaos was over, the rest was pretty smooth sailing. Now let's move to my favorite part, the drawers. I cut the drawer box and drawer front pieces from the leftover strips of three quarter inch plywood from the beginning. I ripped the pieces for the drawer boxes to about four and a half inches wide, then set up my table saw to cut dados to install the drawer bottom panel. If you've seen many of my videos, this process probably looks familiar. I adjusted the blade height to about a quarter of an inch, then ran the strips through the table saw once, adjusted, then ran it through again, then adjusted back and finished cutting out the dado. Now you could obviously use a dado blade, but usually for some quick cuts like this, I'd rather just do this than swap blades, but to each their own. <laughs> then I trimmed these strips down to length to make the drawer boxes. While I was already cutting down all this plywood, I went ahead and cut the drawer fronts to size and the tops as well. That way I could apply iron on edge bending to all of it at the same time. I drilled three quarter inch pocket holes into the front and back pieces of the drawer boxes, then assembled using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. I cut and installed a quarter inch plywood bottom panel to slide into these dados before adding the fourth side. Then I installed these onto the slides in each nightstand so that the drawer box was about one and a quarter inch inset from the front edge to allow for the inset drawer front later. Now for this drawer front, I mentioned that I cut this from three quarter inch plywood earlier, but to dress it up a little, I added some half round molding along the front edges. This is totally optional and you could use a different type of molding or whatever if you'd rather. For the half round, I just mitered these corners 45 degrees and cut the pieces to fit, then use some fast dry wood glue to attach them. I installed this front onto the drawer box using one and a quarter inch screws from the inside so that there was about an eighth of an inch gap around all sides of the drawer front. To add the top, I needed to remove the drawer to access the supports. So I used the little tabs on the slides to slide the drawer box out, then flip the top upside down and the nightstand on top of it. I centered it side to side and made sure that the back edges were flush, then used one and a quarter inch screws to secure it through the top supports. To finish up the sides, I cut some thin lattice trim to fit on the side panels at the top and bottom. Now I used quarter inch thick lattice trim for this because it just added another dimension with it being thinner, but you could certainly use one by twos here instead if you prefer. 
Again, I just used fast dry wood glue to attach these, but regular wood glue would work just as well with a few clamps to hold it until it's dry. I actually hadn't originally planned on adding a back panel here, but after I finished it, I decided to add one. The back is totally optional, and if you like it more open, you can skip it. But I just cut a piece of quarter inch plywood to cover this back side. Before attaching, I stained everything first. Nothing is worse than trying to crawl into a tiny space and stain a back panel. Well, there are probably worse things, but that's pretty bad. So I stained these nightstands to match the bed. Minwax, early American, and after everything was stained, I stapled this back panel in place. The next day, I added a clear coat poly and the handles, and that completed part two of this matching guest bedroom furniture series. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far, and I've got at least one more piece in the series, so if you are enjoying it, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next part. I hope you enjoyed watching these pieces come together and seeing some of my bloopers and mistakes. <laughs> and if you'd like to check out the plans to build your own, be sure to head to the links in the description to check them out. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.